Hello and welcome to our introduction to electrical design in Revit. In this video, we'll go over the systems tab in Revit where most of the electrical design commands live, the electrical settings command, inserting and circuiting panels, transformers, and lighting and electrical fixtures, electrical equipment and electrical fixture families, drawing home runs and loops, and making and modifying panel schedules. A few things we won't cover are more universal Revit functions like tagging, loading families, or creating views, spaces, schedules, and sheets. We also won't be doing any deep dives or complex topics like family and template customization or lighting design. Also, I'll occasionally mention places where your workflow can be improved with our Revit add-in Design Master Electrical RT. To keep this simple and show how easy it can be, we'll start with the default Revit template. And I'll run the wall command just to put something there for our devices to go on. Here we have the systems tab. Again, this is where most of your electrical design commands will live. We have the electrical equipment command, which is for inserting your panels, transformers, anything that is involved in distributing the power throughout your system. We also have the lighting fixture command, which is of course your light fixtures. We also have electrical fixture commands. And that's further broken up into your receptacles, your switches, data, communications, fire alarms, etc. We also have the mechanical equipment command, which is more in the purview of your mechanical engineer dealing with air handlers, cooling towers, that sort of thing. But there are electrical settings you can set for those devices. And so if you ever need to do that, if you ever need to deal with those kinds of devices, that is where that command lives. You can also access your electrical settings from this tab using this arrow here. This and some of the other things we'll talk about will have multiple methods for how you can actually get there. For instance, for this command, you can also go to the Manage tab, then MEP Settings, and you'll see it's listed there. There is also a keyboard shortcut notated here, ES. Here in the Electrical Settings command, you define your wire sizes, your wiring types, your voltages, your distribution systems. You can also define your load calculations here, which includes your load classifications and demand factors. Because we're operating from a template, a lot of this has already been populated, but it's still helpful to know where to find those things in this command in case you need to make changes depending on your project, whether that's reconfiguring your loads, whether that's adding new voltages and distribution systems, that sort of thing. Something to note, if you're going to be using the Design Master Electrical RT, our software will replace the wire sizing that Revit does with our own. Having said that, you do need to make sure the wiring types are still well defined because devices will still have that Revit wiring type associated with them. And if they aren't properly configured, it causes other problems that make it difficult for our software to function. So let's get started by inserting some panels and transformers into our project. This template already has some devices loaded. So to select one, we go over here to the properties panel and we'll select a panel board. Insert it on the wall. Then we can select a transformer as well. Now that we have the devices inserted, we can circuit them together. We'll start by setting the secondary distribution system for the transformer. You'll notice the distribution systems available are based on the distribution systems we defined in the electrical settings command. Something else to note, if I set it to the single phase distribution system, it's going to yell at me. The reason for that is the transformer family is configured for three phase systems, not single phase. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Then to circuit them together, we select the panel. 
you'll notice the distribution system is already set for that. Again, that's because of how it's configured in the family. Run the power command and select the transformer. We've talked about how things are configured in the families for these devices that affect the distribution systems. Let's take a deeper look at that. In the properties panel for the family, you can set the electrical equipment part type, which among other things is going to inform the template used for the panel schedule when that is created. For panels, you can also use this field to further customize what the circuit table is going to look like when you make the panel schedule. The circular graphic here represents the power connection for the family. Here's where you set the number of poles, the voltage, that sort of thing. You can also configure these settings in the family types command. There are some parameters that can only be set here at the family level, and there are others that can be set for specific devices. Generally speaking, if it has default next to the parameter name, it's something that you can change for the individual devices, such as the bus size or the mounting or enclosure for this panel. Something to remember, if you make any changes in the family, use the load into project or load into project and close command to refresh the definition of the panel in the project. If we select the panel back here in the project, you can see where we can, again, configure some of those parameters, such as the mounting, enclosure, and bus size. In addition, if you're going to be using Design Master Electrical RT, you can use our panel edit command. This command gives you an easy to understand graphical interface where you can, again, configure all those settings. It also gives you access to some controls that Revit does not. For instance, for this transformer, Revit does not actually give you a parameter to set a transformer size. With Design Master, you can set that size here. Additionally, in the family, we also have a family edit command that you can similarly use to set up those things in the device family. Now that we have our panel and transformer inserted and circuited, let's look at some of our circuitable devices. So we'll run the lighting fixture command, and it's as simple as selecting a surface to insert the lighting fixture on. It works the same way for these receptacles. Let's take a closer look at this receptacle family. Much like the panel, electrical fixtures will also have this power connector. And again, this is where you set the number of poles, where you can set the voltage. This is also where you define the load classification, which will correspond to those load classifications in the electrical settings to determine the demand factors and how that is actually calculated for your panel schedules. The process for circuiting these is the same as for the panel before. Select the devices and run the power command. Then select the device that will feed them. For this connection, you can also set the connection type. For this, we'll keep it at breaker. Once we have the devices circuited, we can also draw home runs and loops for our floor plans. If you still have the devices selected when you circuit them, and you're in a floor plan, it will generally automatically select the circuit so you can draw loops immediately. But this workflow will show you how to do that if you've deselected the devices and need to go back. The method that I prefer is to hover over one of these circuited devices, press the tab key, which will highlight the circuit, then click to select it. And from here, you have the option for arced wires or chamfered wires. Run the command and it will insert the loops and the home run for you. If you have your tick marks configured, it will also in include those. Similar to our panel, you can select the individual device to make changes to it here. You can also select the circuit itself to make further changes, including the trip rating for the breaker. 
if you're using Design Master Electrical RT, we also have the circuit edit command for customizing those circuits where you can, again, set the trip rating, you can size the wires, set the circuit description, and so on. We also have the instance edit command for modifying specific devices to have those sizing criteria set up before you even circuit them. Similarly, we do also have the family edit command, which you can use to, again, define the circuit descriptions, define those sizing criteria at the family level, which can save you a ton of time when you're having to insert and circuit a bunch of devices. That way you can define something once and not have to worry about doing it for every individual circuit. Next, we'll take a look at panel schedules. To create one, Select the panel you want the panel schedule for and run the create panel schedules command. You can then select a template or you can use the default, which is what we'll do here. As you can see, there are some parameters that are already laid out in this template, as well as the circuit table that shows the receptacles we circuited earlier. You can also make changes to some of those instance level parameters here, such as the bus size, and the MCB rating. Other things that can't be changed on the individual level, such as the distribution system, can't be changed here. You can also make changes to your circuits, such as changing the description here, or changing the trip rating. You'll notice when I ran the create panel schedule command, it immediately opened it. If you close the panel schedule and need to get back to it, there are a few ways to do that. You can use the project browser here and open the panel schedule section of the browser. You can also go to a model view, select the panel, then run edit panel schedule. Speaking of editing the panel schedule, if you want to make changes to the template, you can do that through the manage tab. Go to panel schedule templates, where they have the manage templates command, which we'll take a look at in a moment, and edit a template. From here, you have several commands to modify how the schedule behaves. You can add or remove columns. You can change which parameters are displayed, that sort of thing. We'll just make a small change just to show how that works. And finish the template. You'll notice the change did not take place automatically. You will need to refresh the template definition. One way to do that is through the change template command, where you can change to a different template, then back. You can also go back to the manage tab, panel schedule templates, and go to manage templates. From this tab, you can make changes to your templates, similar to the edit a template command, we can also go to the Apply Templates tab to refresh the definition for devices whose panel schedule templates have changed. And here you'll notice the description for that field has changed. And that is it for this introduction to electrical design in Revit. Hopefully this answered most of your questions about how to get started designing your electrical systems. And if you want to step up your electrical design game, consider checking out Design Master Electrical RT using the link in the description. We've got tutorials and a 30-day free trial to help you get started. Take care.